Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 70. Day Day is 3070, 3000 is to indicate that we are in the third edition, third edition, day 70, we are on page number 280, we are about to begin geometry exercises that you see there on page number 280. Turn, turn to page 280, make sure the book is in front of you and let's get going. Problem number one. In problem number one we are told that line L and M, line, lines L and M, we are told, are parallel as it is shown in the picture. So let's draw the line L and M. Oh, the two horizontal lines are parallel. They do not actually call them line L and M. That's just what I'm calling them. It says in the picture that is given to us below, it says two horizontal lines are parallel. We're going to call them line L and M because it's easier to talk about them. So here is our line L and here is our line M. And as you can see, they are parallel. And the question simply is, if that's the case, find the values of x and y. And we are given one line that looks, looks like this. And here is the x angle x they're talking about. We are told that this is 57 degrees. And there's another line where this angle happens to be y, y degrees. What else we are told? We are told that this is 42 degrees. It's very straightforward, very simple. Find find x and y. We really don't have to do anything at all. If they are parallel, if they are parallel, then we know that we know that if this is 57, then its opposite interior angle is also 57. So this is also 57. So that was very straightforward. Also, the same logic will apply here. If 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 this is if this is 42, if this is 42 then this angle right here is also 42. Okay, when I say same logic, same logic goes something like this, okay? Pay attention so that I can make it clear. As you can see there, there's a, there's a line, parallel line here. It cuts like this. This angle equals that angle. And let's do it in a different color here. I also had a green color, but I can't find it. So let's do the red. And here we have a line like this, and this angle will equal that angle. This angle will equal that angle. But if this is 57, then so is this. this these are vertical angles, these two are vertical angles. So if this is 57, that's 57. And therefore, if this is 57, that is 57. That's it. So x is equal to 57. What about y? How much is y? Well, y, if this is 42, then y is simply going to be. 180 minus 42 because this is a straight line. This is a straight line and therefore y is simply going to be 180 minus 42. 180 minus 42. 180 minus 40 would have been 140 so it's just going to be 138. 138. That's it. I think we made too much fuss about it. Let's move on. Number two. Number two. Number two, again, we are given a picture. It says in geometry figure below, AC is equal to BC. Let's first draw the picture as it is given to us. As it is given to us. So here is our line AB, we are told. And here is something like this. This is A. This is B, we are told. This is C. X and Y. This is X and this is Y. This angle right here, this angle right here is y. This point is what they're calling b. And we are told that AC equals BC. Well, if two sides in a, in a triangle equal to each other, then we're dealing with an isosceles triangle. So this implies that triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle. 
it's an isosceles triangle. But the problem here is that they're telling us that AC equals BC. A to C is here. This side equals that side. Let's put it in a way, let's put it in a way that's easier to deal with. Typically, we look, we are used to seeing isosceles triangle. Let's put it in a way that actually makes it easier for you to see that it is indeed isosceles. So that almost looks like equilateral. So let's, 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 let's do it like this. Now we can clearly see that this side is very short. This side equals that side. The AC, we are told, is equal to BC. So let's call this AC and let's call it BC, BC. We have to locate all the other, other angles now. Don't do it in a hurry, otherwise you're going to get it wrong. Okay, where is angle X? Angle X is by the C. So right here you see, this is your angle X. Where is, where is angle Y? Angle Y is by point B, but it's the, it's, it's the outside. This is, not in, in, this is the inside one, this is, this is the inside one, this, is the, this angle equals that angle, but this, so this angle will equal that angle, and Y is the outside angle right here. Are you with me? Which of course is same as this angle right here because they are, they are opposite angle. This is Y. We have to find X and we have to find Y. Are there any angles that are given to us? We are told that this angle right here is 125. So let's put it here. This is 125. And now we can begin our process. It's very simple, very straightforward. What happens? If this is 125, if this is 125, and since this is a straight line, then this angle must be 180 minus 125. 180 minus 120 would have been 60. 180 minus 125 is 55. Okay, watch what happens. So it's 55. This angle is 55. Well, if that angle is 55, if that angle is 55, because it's an isosceles triangle, these two sides are equal, which means this angle must equal that angle which we just found out is 55, so this must be 55 as well. Are you with me so far? If this angle is 55 and that angle is 55, then x that they're talking about, x, we know that x plus this angle 55, plus this angle 55, has to add up to 180, because it's a triangle. And therefore x must be, therefore x must be equal, this implies that x must be 180 minus the 2 times 55 minus the 2 times 55 because there are two 55's 2 times 55's, 2 times 50 is 100, 2 times 55 is going to be 110 180 minus 110 is 70 so we did that part, x we just found now is 70 x equals 70 how do we find the y? y is also very straightforward, this angle is 55 and 55 plus y is 180 let's do it here, 55 plus y right here, 55, 55 plus y has to equal 180 because it's a straight line and therefore y would be 180 minus 55, 180 minus 60 would have been 120 and therefore 180 minus 55 is going to be 125. See what happens is in a simple problem like this, the more you try to explain the more annoying it gets. It's very simple, very straightforward, you understand the concept. Let's go to number three. Let's go to number three. Oh, we have another picture. So what's the relationship between X, Y and Z? So let's, let's plot it here. Let's plot it over here. We don't need it anymore. And the question is straightforward. What's the relationship between X, Y and Z? as they are shown in the picture. Something like this. We are told that this is x degrees, we are told that this is y degrees, and we are told that this is z degrees. What's the relationship? What is the relationship between x, y, and z? Well, if this is z degrees, if this is z degrees, how much do you suppose this angle is? Again, because they have to add up to 180, because it's a straight line. 
is a straight line, right here is a straight line and if this is z degrees, then this must be 180 minus z. Let's make a note of it. Okay, watch what happens. Now we can talk about the triangle itself. And let's give this, I'm looking at my pointer. Let's give this three vertices name so we can talk about the triangle. Let's call this triangle ABC. Not that it's necessary, but it makes it easier. In this triangle ABC, like any other triangle, the sum of the angles has to equal 180. I'm not going to write all of that down. In any triangle, sum of the angles has to equal 180, which means, uh, let's start with A, so Y plus X, which is A, B, and C. Y plus X plus C, which we just agreed is equal to 180 minus Z, has to equal 180. What do we notice? What we notice is that what we notice is that 180 appears on both sides. 180 appears on both sides of the of the equation. Which means if you were to subtract 180 from both sides of the equation, 180 will drop out. And what we end up with is what we end up is x plus y minus z equals zero. If you add z to both sides, z is going to cancel out and x plus y equals z. That's the relationship x plus y equals z, right here, z, x plus y, the sum of, the, okay, now I'm going to say it, the sum of the two opposite interior angle, this is called interior angle, this is called interior angle, this is, this is the exterior angle, because it sits on the outside, sometimes it's called exterior angle, sometimes it's called external angle, external angle, or sometimes it is called exterior angle, so, the sum of the, this is the angle, this is what we're talking about, the opposite, opposite to that angle is this and that. The sum of the opposite interior angle, these are called interior angle because they are inside the, inside the triangle. The sum of the opposite interior angle is always equal to the exterior angle. Let's write it down here. That's a very important, that's a very important fact in geometry that we must understand and we must know. In any triangle, it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be any particular kind of triangle, doesn't need to be right angle triangle or isosceles triangle or equilateral triangle or, or obtuse triangle or acute triangle, in any triangle, as long as it's a triangle, in any triangle, in any triangle, the sum, SUM sum, of the two opposite interior angle, interior angles rather, must always equal the Exterior, or as you as you like, sometimes it's called external angle. You see, that's all. Let's do one more. Let's draw one more, so we can understand. So we can understand. Here's here's triangle P, Q, and P, Q, and R. That's what happens if we call this angle angle A. And this we call this angle B, then we're talking about exterior angle. This is the interior angle, this is the exterior angle right here, this, this angle. So sum of A and B will equal this angle. Let's call this angle C. We're not talking about this guy. Yeah, that guy is angle C, let's call it, give it a different name. Right here, this angle we're talking about. Let's call it angle B. C is the interior angle. C is the interior angle, the exterior angle is that. Do you understand? So here A plus D must equal A plus B must equal D. A plus B will equal D. In which kind of triangle? The answer is in any kind of triangle. If you have an exterior angle, it must equal the sum of the opposite interior angle. These are the opposite ones. Do you understand? A, B, we did this thing, let's, 
plus 2xy again x, y, and z. So watch what happens. x plus z, x plus z here, x plus z would have to equal this guy right here. Let's call it angle P. X plus x plus y, I meant x plus y, x plus z, x plus z would have to equal this guy right here. Let's call it Q. And y plus z, y plus z, y plus z would equal this angle right here. Let's call it R. That's what we're talking about. The sum of the opposite interior angle, if you're talking about if you're talking about this exterior angle, then the opposite interior angles are these two. If you're talking about P, the opposite interior angles are X and Y. If you're talking about Q, the opposite interior angles are X and Z. You see, that's why they're equal. If you're talking about R, then the opposite interior angles are Y and Z. You see, Y and Z equals R. And that's the identity. The sum of the interior angle of any triangle must equal its opposite exterior angle in any triangle. Question number four talks about a very strange kind of picture, a very strange kind of diagram called decagon. We're going to do, talk about it separately in a separate video. We're going to make, we'll talk about what the decagon is and how to figure out the sum of the interior angles of the decagon, which is what the question is asking about. Okay? I'll see you tomorrow. We'll do it in tomorrow's video. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.